type of ionic compounds that I'm going to teach you how to name here in video three of compound naming is how to name when you're given something called a polyatomic ion. Now this name means exactly how it sounds. Poly is many, so it's a many atom ion. Now the thing that you need to remember about these many atom ions is that they behave as a unit and they carry a charge. So once you have the whole thing, you treat it like a single entity and then you name it or write the formula just like you would if it was a single element. Now I've listed out here the eight most common polyatomic ions that you're gonna see. First three that carry a negative one charge charge are nitrate, NO3 minus, nitrite, NO2 minus, and hydroxide, OH negative. So these all have a negative one charge. Um, I tell my students hydroxide O negative, it's hydroxide O negative, it's hydroxide. The more that you memorize these, the easier it becomes. But for now, start out with a list next to you and then life will be a little bit easier. All right, so those are the three common ones that carry a negative one charge. So let's try, um, write the compound calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate. So calcium is our metal, and we go and find calcium. Here it is. Calcium is in group two, and group two carries a plus two charge. So we're gonna have Ca plus two, and then nitrate is our polyatomic ion, and it's this one right here. And remember, the trick is it behaves as a unit. So you think of it as one thing. So your nitrate is going to be NO3 minus 1. So this is a whole thing. So think of it as one unit. Now you've just got to balance the charges just like we've been doing all along. So now I'm going to add another nitrate. Now my charge is plus two minus two. So what does that mean? That means that my compound has a calcium and it has two nitrates. Well, I need two of this whole thing. So what am I gonna do? I can't just put a two here because now it looks like NO32, which is not a thing. So I'm gonna take my entire nitrate and I'm gonna put it in parentheses and I'm done and this thing is called calcium nitrate. The rules of balancing the charges still apply. Just remember, you're balancing the charges just the same as you did in binary ionic compounds, and you're treating your polyatomic ion as a whole single unit. Let's try and make sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide. So hydroxide is OH minus, okay? All right, so sodium is in group number one. Group one carries a plus one charge as we've memorized. Sodium is Na plus one. Hydroxide, O negative, it's hydroxide, O negative, it's hydroxide. Now look at that. The charge is already balanced, so all I have to do is put it together. I don't use any parentheses. I don't write any one. Sometimes students want to do this or they want to do this. All of that is unnecessary. You just simply put the polyatomic OH with its metal. Just like up here, we put the polyatomic nitrate with its metal. Okay, now let's look at three common polyatomic ions that carry a minus two charge. The first one is sulfate. And I always sing a song, SO4 two minus is sulfate. Sulfate is used so much, it would really be easy, along with hydroxide, just to memorize it. So SO4 two minus is sulfate. That group of atoms is sulfur with four oxygens bonded to it and a minus two charge, you will see all the time. Then we see sulfite. Now I don't know if you notice this, but when we have an eight here, we have three oxygens. When we have an eight here, we have two oxygens. Watch here. We have an eight here, we have four oxygens. And when we have an eight, we have one less 
oxygen. So sulfite is SO3 2 minus. So 8 means I have one more oxygen than my ite. Okay, I ate one more oxygen. That's how I remember it. So sulfite is SO3 2 minus. It's not used as commonly in an introductory chem chemistry course, but sulfate is. And then last of all, we have carbonate. And carbonate is used a lot in an introductory chemistry course, so it's important to memorize this one as well. CO3 2 minus carbonate. Now remember, these guys act like a single unit. Let's start right here with magnesium carbonate. We find magnesium. Magnesium is right here in group two. It has a plus two charge. So my metal is Mg plus two. And then carbonate is right here, CO3 two minus. Now remember this guy acts like a single unit. So you can't break it up. You can't do anything. You can't change that three. When you look at the charges, you notice that they balance out to zero. So we're done making this compound. We're just going to put them together. Remember, charges are never in your final answer. They're simply to help you know how many of each atom or polyatomic ion you need. And that there, folks, is magnesium carbonate. Now, what if we wanted to make lithium carbonate? Well, let's find lithium. Lithium is right here in group one. And right here in group one, lithium has a plus one charge. Okay, so I'm going to write lithium plus one carbonate minus two. And my charges are not balanced. How am I going to balance my charges? I'm going to add another lithium. Now I have plus two minus two. It balances out to zero. So now I'm going to write this compound. Well, I have one, two lithiums, and I have one carbonate. And that compound is lithium carbonate. Now notice, I did not put charges in my final answer, and I did not need to use parentheses here because I only used that guy once. No need to do any unnecessary work. Lithium carbonate. All right, now let's come down here and let's try and name, uh, write the formula for copper two sulfate. Now why on earth do I have this Roman numeral two? Aha, remember copper is multivalent. It can be plus one or plus two. So the Roman numeral tells you it is plus two and sulfate is right over here. SO4 two minus is sulfate. That's one you're going to want to memorize. And looky here, the charge is already balanced. So CuSO4 done. You're going to see that, uh, that compound a lot in your lab because I firmly believe you can teach all of introductory chemistry with salt water and copper sulfate and pennies. Anyway, there's copper sulfate, copper two sulfate. Let's go ahead and try and write tin two hydroxide. Well, once again, the tin is SN. They told us the charge was plus two hydroxide. O negative. It's hydroxide OH negative, one that you're going to want to memorize. Now, when we look at this one, this one does not balance out to zero. So I'm going to need another OH negative. So now I have two of them. So how am I going to write this guy? Well, let's just make sure does it balance. Yep, it equals zero. So we're good. All right. So I've got one SN and I've got two OHs. And students want to do that. But that ain't two o OHs. Remember I told you this whole thing has to act like a unit? I want two of those. So how am I going to show that this two applies to the whole OH? I'm going to put it in parentheses. And you only use the parentheses if you have more than one. Now there's two more polyatomic ions I want to show you that are very commonly used in an introductory chemistry course, and that is phosphate, which is PO4 3 minus phosphate, and then ammonium, which is the only positive one that we're going to mention, NH4 plus. 
If you Google list of polyatomic ions, you can see that there's many more than what we're mentioning. But frankly, folks, once you know how to do this, you can use any polyatomic ion, follow the rules that you've learned, and you're going to be just fine. All right, so now let's try write the formula for calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate. If we look at calcium over here, it's in group 2. Group 2 has a plus 2 charge, so it's going to be Ca plus 2. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion right here. Phosphate is PO4 3 minus. It would be helpful to memorize that, but for now we'll use it from a list. Now you notice that the charges do not balance, and you also notice that you have a polyatomic ion here and you cannot split this thing up. You treat it as a whole thing. So let's do it the shortcut way. The shortcut way is we just play the switch game and we would land up with Ca3PO4 and I need two of them, so I put the PO4 in parentheses and I'm finished. Now, sometimes when students switch and do the shortcut, they jumble up all the numbers and they uh, mess with this four, which they're not allowed to. If you find that the shortcut is messing you up, don't take the shortcut. Just balance out the charges the long way. All right, I'm going to need three calciums to get a plus six charge, and I'm gonna need two phosphates to get a minus six charge and now I'm going to write my formula, calcium 1, 2, 3, phosphate 1, 2, put it in parentheses, give it a 2, and these two agree. Doesn't matter how you get there, the importance is that you understand why you're doing something. Okay, let's try aluminum phosphate. In fact, I want you to try aluminum phosphate on your own. So here we have aluminum. Aluminum is in group 13. Aluminum is plus 3. Phosphate is PO4 minus 3. What on earth? Oh, they're easy. This one's easy. She gave us an easy one. Yes, I did. And it looks like dog food. Elpo. It's just going to be ALPO4. Done. Notice uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, uppercase. Very important. You can't be changing those around. There are no parentheses, no charges in my final answer. Hopefully you were able to get that one on your own. Now let's move on to these last two, ammonium chloride and ammonium sulfate. Now remember, ammonium is the positive polyatomic ion I taught you, NH4+. So let's try this one. Ammonium is NH4+. Chloride comes from chlorine. Chlorine is right here in group 17, and it has a minus one charge, so Cl minus, and my charges balance out, plus one, minus one, so I'm just gonna put this thing together like the one above. No parentheses, no charges in my final answer, and there is ammonium chloride. Now I'm going to leave you with a challenge one to try on your own, ammonium sulfate. So pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, hopefully you tried it. Ammonium is NH4+, sulfate is SO4-, minus is sulfate. Okay. These things are polyatomics. I may not and I cannot change them. The N, the H, the 4, the S, the O, the 4 have got to stay. The only thing I can play with are my amounts and my charges. Here I have plus 1. Here I have minus 2. So I'm going to need another NH4. Plus 2, minus 2, 0. Okay, so let's write the compound. NH4. Four, one, two, two of them. Put it in parentheses, two of them. SO4, one of them. Whoa, that is quite the compound, and that baby is called ammonium sulfate. And now, folks, you have learned how to name 
any kind of ionic compound out there. Okay, I have four sample problems for you to do. Okay, so pause the video and try on your own. Okay, let's see how you did. First one, I gave you the formula. This is just lithium and bromine. It's a binary ionic compound. Bromine becomes bromide. I don't put any Roman numerals because lithium is just in group one plus one charge and I am done. Nice and easy. Then this next one is tin with bromide, bromine. And I know that tin can have a multivalent charge. So I have to look at this. Br is minus one, but there's two of them. So the total charge on this is minus two. So the total charge on the tin has to be plus two. So this is going to be tin to bromide. Now you might say, well, what if I forgot the two? Well, then the name is incomplete because remember tin is multivalent. So I've got to specify what the charge is and I assume the charge based on the formula that I was given. Number three, ammonium iodide. Well, ammonium is a polyatomic ion, NH4+. Plus. Iodine, iodine is right here in group 17, and it has a minus one charge, minus one. So I'm just going to put those two together because their charges balance out. So this is going to be N H4I, ammonium iodide. And then the last one, magnesium phosphate. Now, it's not phosphide, it's phosphate, so that's a polyatomic ion. So let's look. Magnesium is right here in group two. Group two has a positive two charge. So Mg plus two Phosphate is a polyatomic, we just learned, PO4, 3 minus. Now, remember, I cannot change that, and I need to balance my charges. So I'm going to try the shortcut way and just play the switcheroo game. Put a 3 there and a 2 there. Okay, so when I put a 3 there, it's going to be Mg3, PO4, I need 2 of them. If that way confuses you, remember Mg plus 2, PO4, 3 minus. I'm going to add two of these to make three. Two of these, my charge is plus 6, minus 6. Now when I write out my compound, I'm going to have magnesium, one, two, three of them. Phosphate, one, two of them put it in parentheses, write two, and that guy is a hard one. And there you go. If you got all of those, um, you're doing great. If you missed number three and four, rewatch video three. If you missed number two, rewatch video two. And if you missed number one, rewatch video one. And that concludes ionic naming. <laughs>